In March of 2024, I had the opportunity to visit the International Pizza Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada. The origin of this adventure began back in 2019, when I was able to track down some of my paternal relatives who live in the town of Carbonara, Italy, and have a pizzeria in a town called Palma Campagna, the town where both my mother and father were born. The DeLuca family own a pizzeria named Oro Bianco, which in English is white gold. I am related to this family through my great-grandparents, who had two children, Maria and Teresa. Maria is my grandmother, and Teresa is the maternal relative of the DeLuca family, who remained in Carbonara, Italy. This is Michela Carbone, a colleague of Carlo, and that's Carlo. The Pizza Expo is a trade show that showcases products and processes for pizza making and other pizza offerings. Carla and Michaela decided not to compete this visit, as they wanted to get used to the atmosphere at such a large venue. And also it was their first visit to the United States, and they wanted to focus and enjoy being observers and sightseers. As they made their way through the exhibits, the vendors tried to engage them in conversation, trying to sell their wares. Language was a little bit of a barrier. However, many of the vendors spoke Italian or had Italian speakers as part of their team. <laughs> Carlo and Michela took the opportunity to meander through the exhibit hall and view various products. They were impressed by all the offerings and enjoyed being immersed in the experience, as was I as an interested spectator and documenter. As they made their way through the venue, it became apparent that although they were far from home, there were some connections. A number of their colleagues and friends had also made the trip from Italy. And they were happy to have others there that they knew and who spoke their language both in word and in pizza making. Some of their Italian connections were representatives for companies that sponsored them or provided products to pizzerias throughout the world. It was a good opportunity for Michela and Carlo to make or strengthen connections that they had in the pizza industry. One of the pizza making competitions was referred to as best of the best, where previous world champions were asked to return to the expo and compete among themselves to determine who was the quote best of the best. This pizzaiolo is Carmine or Carmine Candito, who won the Pizza World Championship in 2022. Carmine is originally from Naples, Italy, and is currently the pizzaiola at a pizzeria in Miami, Florida. He has over 30 years experience as a pizzaiolo. Competitors had to include three items that were unknown to them going into the competition. The three items were pork belly, red onion, and pineapple. Pineapple being a highly contested ingredient in Italy. Many believe that it does not belong at all on a pizza. Carmine used a double cooking style of pizza making, both frying and baking the pizza dough, as he added the unknown ingredients to him as well as some of his own. He also added a crown around the edge of the pizza, spelling out Pizza Expo 2024. Any little touch that might impress the judges is always welcome. 
So each pie is prepared. The pie is first shown to the judges, and they get a chance to look at the bottom of it and how well it's cooked and the overall presentation. Then slices are prepared for each of the four judges. The four judges taste each slice and give it a score. The four scores are then averaged to determine a final score, and the person with the highest score will be crowned as best of the best. There were four competitors in the best of the best. Two of them were from Italy. Carmine here, who is, again, as I mentioned, is originally from Naples and Umberto Fornito, who's here with Carlo there. Uh, Umberto was the 2018 world champion pizza maker. He comes from a town called Frata Maggiore, Italy, and is involved in a pizzeria that has been family-owned, and he's been a pizzaiola for probably about 50 years. Assisting him was another pizzaiola, who had also won in previous years. Uh, and it shows that the Pizza makers, although they compete at times, they're really sort of like a family, and they support each other and help each other as best that they can. Umberto, again, had to use the three unknown ingredients to him. And plus, even for all of the competitors, they, they had to work in a kitchen that was unfamiliar to them. But they did their best in trying to present the best pizza possible. Neither Carmine or Umberto won the best of the best, but they did well. Not only pizzas were showcased, this is uh, tortellini being made. Again, whatever it is to bring people to the table to see your product, whether it be flour or a pasta making machine or an oven, uh, it, it always helps to kind of get people to come to and stop and talk to you. serve. One of the competitions had to do with twirling of pizzas. The twirling of pizzas is uh, more of a show thing. Most pizzaiolos uh, do not typically twirl pizzas. There's really no need. But it's certainly a, pr a crowd pleaser and it shows some real skill to be able to keep the dough moving and to be able to be agile enough to throw it around, and then sometimes being gymnastic enough to make some moves and really impress the, the judges as well as the crowd. It is a crowd-pleasing event. It's something that you don't get an opportunity to see too often, and it's certainly something that people enjoy. This particular uh, person had some real skill at pizza throwing and flying and twirling, and he was really enjoying himself, and the crowd was enjoying his presentation. It wasn't the main purpose of the show, but it was certainly a crowd pleaser. And being in Las Vegas, things are done grandly, so uh, trying to please a large crowd at one time was uh, highly anticipated by the competitors as well as the people there. And being Las Vegas, uh, the, the ending was surely up to par with Las Vegas standards. A lot of glitter and some, some sparkle and flame and a lot of pizza twirling. The crowd really appreciated and enjoyed the opportunity to see it and uh, responded well to, the, to all of the competitors. And being that we were in Las Vegas, both Carlo and Michela wanted to get out a little bit and experience the United States and particularly Las Vegas. This was their first trip to the United States. Here in New York, New York, I told them that they should probably come to New York and see it. It's a better representation, but uh, just as the, the Venetian uh, is something nice, uh, Venice is much better, they took their time and checked a little bit out, and one arm bandit, something that they had to try. Thankfully, they didn't spend much time there. And they definitely wanted to take a picture by the Las Vegas sign. 
The Sphere is one of the recent uh, attractions that was added in Las Vegas. Caesar's Palace and the Bellagio Fountains. This was taken from the wheel, uh, sort of a big Ferris wheel. There's Carlo with the banner of his uh, soccer team in the hometown, where his pizzeria is in Palma Campania. But they also had an opportunity to make pizza, even though they weren't competing. Many of the vendors were colleagues or friends of theirs that had set up ovens and pizza-making stations, again, to draw people in. And they were happy to allow Michela and Carlo the opportunity to make pizza. I think it was good for the participants who came, uh, the spectators, to see the different styles of pizza making. Although traditional Neapolitan pizza, there's not much difference, but yet each pizzaiola has a little bit of a different flair and a different technique. Here his friend Damiano uh, is placing the pizza that Carlo prepared in the oven. And usually in pizzerias, uh, more than one person is involved in the pizza making process because it allows the pizzas to come out quicker. One person can concentrate on forming the pizzas, the other placing them in the oven and taking them out of the oven. But as you can see here, Carlo is stretching the dough with his hands. And flipping it over. And again, it's more pulling with the hands rather than turning or spinning. The dough is then placed down on the table. Fresh tomatoes, crushed usually San Marzano tomatoes, mozzarella. It can be either whole milk mozzarella, they call fior de latte, or a buffalo mozzarella, which is water buffalo. Milk is used to make mozzarella, which has a higher fat content, it melts a little bit differently. And then basil is placed. Basil and uh, mozzarella and tomatoes, green, white, and red, the three colors of the Italian flag. Pizza is pulled onto the peel and then stretched to the proper shape that they wanted to have, which is round, and slipped into the oven. Quick pull of the peel, leaves the pizza on the oven floor, and with a high temperature, the pizza is cooked within a couple of minutes. The heat source in a pizza oven particularly wood-fired oven, is usually on one side of the oven. Uh, so one of the tricks of the trade is to be able to kind of rotate the pizza while it's still in the oven. And that's done by putting the peel in and raising it and using a motion with the stick of the peel uh, to rotate the pizza so that it cooks evenly. Here, a colleague of Damiano is uh, doing some video, and he was going to be presenting his pizza with making with his friend, Carlo, uh, to a, I, I think it was an Instagram account, possibly, or somewhere in that, that genre of social media. As you can see now, Carlo is kind of working that pie around in a circle, just making sure that it gets cooked evenly on both sides, or all four sides. A circle is in the, on, all, on all sides, so it doesn't get burnt on one side. Usually the pizzaiola will lift it, take a look underneath to see if it's cooked properly. You don't want to burn it, but you don't want it to be undercooked either. And the pizzaiola has a good eye and knows when to take it out. One of the last things they'll do is they'll raise it just a little bit into the oven because the oven is hotter at the top than it is at the bottom, and that helps bubble the cheese and char the dough a little bit or crust and give it a unique style and flavor.
Michello also had the opportunity to make pizzas at another vendor's location. And here her margarita pizza is going on the peel. She sprinkles a little bit of flour to make it easy to slide the pizza on and off the peel. She stretches it to the shape that she would like, size and shape. And then again, she has an assistant who's putting it in the oven for her so she can concentrate on making the next pizza. Hand stretching, leaving the, the crown or the outside of it a little thicker. She did a little twirl there, but again, nothing compared to what they were doing on stage. Mostly the hands are used to stretch the dough in the middle, but leave that bit of an edge so that there's a bit of a crust. San Marzano tomatoes, fresh, mozzarella, as you can see her assistant is twirling the pizza in the back to make sure that it's cooked on all sides. Basil, a little bit of grated cheese, there's her pizza completed. She also put a little bit of olive oil. And those are really the main ingredients. So it's dough, tomatoes, mozzarella, sometimes a little bit of grated cheese, basil, and olive oil. And done. Carlo was in high demand, uh, and people were eager to see what he could make. Uh, he had a good style that people enjoyed, and a, a very tasty pizza. So you see here he's leaving that cross to the round the outside a little thicker than the inside of it and he uses his hands flopping the pizza back and forth on his hands to stretch it but not stretching the crust but stretching the inside here he's not going to make a traditional pizza that we're Americans are used to but it's called a marinara pizza. So he started with a little bit of herbs, uh, oregano at the bottom. Again, tomatoes. A little bit of capers. and some chopped olive. Basil. And a little bit of grated cheese. So this pizza, you know, there's a place, in the, clove of garlic placed in the middle. A bit of olive oil spread lightly. This is a pizza without cheese, or at least fresh cheese, just the grated cheese. It was called a marinara because it was for fishermen who would go out on the boats and they wouldn't be able to hold fresh cheese. It would go bad out on the boat if they were out for days at a time. This was a way for them to have pizza that would not go bad. No refrigeration was needed. And once he has it on the peel, he stretches it to shape. And a quick slip out. Checks the bottom of the pizza to see if it's well cooked. Raises it a bit to get a little bit more char on the top. Turn it so that make sure that one side doesn't get overly cooked.
The dough that's used in Italy is triple zero flour usually. Uh, and the fermentation process provides a, a softer dough, a uh, softer crust than American pizza. Uh, here he's now making the final touches on his pizza by placing some anchovy. And anchovy and garlic uh, are pretty much staple uh, ingredients for a marinara pizza. Capers and olives give it a little bit extra. And each pizzaiola has a little bit of their own style and preference in terms of pizza making. Here there was a group of people who were eagerly awaiting his pizza because they had tasted his others and enjoyed it very much and were hoping to get a piece of this one. Overall, it was a wonderful experience in Las Vegas, being at the Pizza Expo and spending some time with a relative of mine who I had met in Italy and then encountered in America. I'm hoping to share other kinds of events that I've had and adventures that I've had, tracking my family and tracking different events and different happenings and sightseeing in Italy uh, through the years. Uh, it, it's a country that I have a great affection for. It's part of my history, but it also is a country that has very varied kinds of uh, geography and food and music and just culture, a great history, um, thousands of years of history that still remains to be seen. Um, places like Pompeii and Rome, um, been to them, and I plan to share them with you as we go forward. Uh, it's been a great gift for me, and I hope you enjoyed this first episode and a little taste of it, and will join me again as I present my Italian heritage and adventures.